啊。Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. I don't think I've debuted my blonde hair yet. Oh my god. Hi, I'm blonde now. <laughs> you like my hair? G thanks. Just about it. Um yeah, I just decided to go lighter. I've been wanting to go lighter for ages and I'm in love with it so much. I really love being lighter. Although I did have my eyebrows dyed recently, so they're very dark compared to my hair. So it's taking some getting used to. I think it looks a bit strange they'll lighten up soon enough anyway today is the possible launch of a new series that i'd like to do on my channel this video was actually requested by one of you guys by katie who dm'd me on instagram so thank you so much and it was a request to just show how to put eyelashes on now i was thinking about doing a series on my channel called back to basics or something like that where i go through the basics of just blending using sponges all of that kind of stuff where people just assume that we all know how to do and I'd have it all in a playlist and I thought I'd do individual videos on these subjects to go more in depth in them and break them down into something that's easy to follow because a lot of these YouTube videos just say and blend and what does that mean? You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? But today is one of those kind of videos where people just assume in makeup tutorials and that is just popping on falsies. You see it all the time in tutorials, they've done a beautiful eye look, shown you how to do it and then next thing they have false lashes on. And that's it, nothing said, just oh this lash style is blah blah blah. <laughs> So today I'm going to discuss my technique, things that I use, different lashes, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you what I do with my eyes, how I style the lashes and get them to work for myself. Huge disclaimer, I am not a professional, my lashes never look the same. It took me so long to even get to this level of putting my lashes on and I am still learning every single day. So I am not by any means perfect at putting lashes on, in fact mine are probably wonky today. But it's always nice to share what I've learned, tips and tricks, and yeah. So thank you so much for Katie for asking for this video, but let's get right into it. So quickly, I just want to talk about eye shape. Everybody's eyes are completely different shapes and sizes. They're all beautiful, but they're all different. So you need to take into consideration what kind of style, length you are going to be looking into. Because if you don't have a lot of lid space and then you get massive eyelashes, it's going to take over the whole look. Unless that's what you want, typically you want to kind of stray away from that kind of style if you don't have a lot of eye space here. And especially if you're doing like eyeshadow or anything like that, then you're going to want more of a a shorter lash. Unfortunately this kind of thing is only learned through trial and error but just look at the lashes because when you go into boots or anything like that you'll be able to pick up the lash and look in the box so you'll be able to see in the box what kind of length it is if it's very long or if it's very short very wispy very sparse very dense there's so many different lash styles. <laughs> I'll show you a few of my favorites these are by Doll Beauty they're kind of more of an expensive brand but their quality is really good. My my favorite lash from them is the Selena lash. They're a little bit beat up, so just bear with me one second. This is what the Selena lash looks like, and as you can tell, they are very wispy. They have different lengths, and it tapers in on the inner corner. Personally, I just feel like this style really opens up my eye because the inner corner is more open and they fan out, so it really makes a nice kind of cat eye illusion to the eye. These are another great pair by Doll Beauty, and they're Esmeralda. They're a little bit more uniform in length, they're less spiky and they have more clusters in them. But these are just some of my favourites from Doll Beauty. I also love a few pairs of Primark lashes, they are very inexpensive. This is the So Sue collection. I don't know what that means, but it's from Primark. This is the London style. These are a bit, little bit more sparse. They don't have clusters to them, but they're quite a uniform length. They taper in slightly, but they're quite long all over. These are one of my favorite. They're in the style Milan. These are like chunks of lashes. They are more suitable for when you're trying to show like your eyeshadow, but have a really stark in your face lash. And finally, the style Kylie is really nice as well. It's similar to Milan as in it's like spiky, but it's got more volume in the lash and it's less separated. So those are just some styles that I like, some affordable and some kind of mid-range lashes. I did do a full-blown video on Poundland lashes where they were actually really, really good. If you want to check that out, I'll leave that in the eye over here for you guys. And then if you're bougie and you have no budget for lashes, then you can check out like Lily lashes or whatever. <laughs> 
I also love Unicorn Cosmetics lashes. They are one other brand that I've really tried out before, but I don't currently have any that are usable. So, <laughs> oh, and also Eyelure lashes. They're really good and they're really affordable. If you're in the UK, you can actually find Eyelure lashes in Savers now and they're really, really cheap in there. So if you're looking to start out with some lashes, check out Eyelure and see if you can get them cheaper in Savers. These are ones I picked up from Savers. They're the Eileen Twinning is Winning. They're kind of like the Demi Wispies by Ardell, I think it is. These are a good starting out lash just because they're a very small band, usually invisible, and they're not heavy on the eyelid. So if you want to get started, maybe pick up a pair of Demi Wispies or a cheaper alternative. That's personally how I started. I used eyelid lashes and I still do <laughs> use eyelid lashes, but that's how I started playing around with lashes and trying them on and trying different styles because they were more affordable. I would suggest if you are just starting out to just go with the cheaper option, get some Poundland lashes, honestly, and just play around and practice. With lashes, they have different bands, so you'll have a see-through band where there's pretty much nothing on the band at all, it's just a see-through piece of like plastic or latex, or you'll have a thicker band where it's very visible and usually black, or you can have some of them that are kind of in between. Just look at the lashes when you pick them up, you'll be able to see at the base of where the lashes start. Typically, the ones with the thicker bands are a little bit harder and tougher to use and they're not going to mold to your eye as easily so if you're just starting out maybe that's not going to be the best style for you but if you're more advanced obviously you're probably not even watching this video <laughs> I personally would start off with something easy to bend, easy to move around. It's just going to be better for you in the long run for practicing and everything like that. Next thing we need to talk about is glue. Obviously you're going to need a decent glue for eyelashes. I personally love the eyelure glue that comes with the lashes. I think that is so easy to use. It really works well. It doesn't take too long to dry down and it's easy to work with. And it also comes with the lashes so you're not purchasing something separately it comes all in the set together by just the glue i personally would it's a really good glue for the lashes obviously you need to bear in mind any allergies if you have a latex allergy anything like that just double check the ingredients of the glue i personally don't have any issues with glue at all and i have got duo glue which is a national treasure as far as glues go and there is a reason it's really good it's really sticky it keeps your lashes on and i just purchased this recently because i ran out of my eyelow one so i've been using this and it is really good. There's loads of different versions of Duo, so that's a plus. Tools, which is completely, completely optional and a little bit extra, not gonna lie. <laughs> you can use what God gave you and just use your fingers to put on eyelashes. That is completely, completely fine. The only reason I use Tools is because I tend to have nails and it's just awkward to get into the inner corner and things like that. So I have two different types of tweezers. I don't use them together, but I'm just giving you options. So you can use traditional tweezers. These aren't traditional tweezers, I know, but you can just use normal tweezers with caution. Okay, you guys, don't go stabbing yourself in the freaking eye. I am not responsible for your eyes, you are. <laughs> so just be careful when using any kind of instrument around your cornea, okay? Just be careful. The other one that I actually picked up really cheap on eBay is this one. This is actually a lash applicator. You can get loads of them online for really cheap or more expensive. I just have this one. Basically, it's just like a tweezer with an extra bit on the end and it just holds the lash and is a bit more delicate on the lash because it actually holds more of the lashes than just the lash band. I find with the more tweezers, I end up kind of tearing them a lot. So this is a really great tool for me and I personally go towards this one more than my tweezers. Another thing that I would suggest having around is scissors so you can cut the lash length to suit your eye or some kind of cutting tool. I use nail clippers because I'm ratchet <laughs> and I didn't have scissors to hand. And also a mirror because you're gonna wanna be able to see all angles. Other kind of optional things that you may require when doing lashes is an eyeliner to tight line or a liquid liner to go over the band. Mascara to actually cover your natural lashes and I think that is it. I'm pretty sure that's it. But yeah, that is. But yeah, that's it for the theory and education, I guess. <laughs> so let's get into the actual application. See you on the flip side. Okay, so before you put any type of glue near your face, first thing you want to do is measure your eyelashes. You want to make sure that they're the right length for your eye because a lot of times eyelashes are too long and they're going to swamp your eye and if you leave them too long they're going to make you actually look like you have droopy eyes which typically isn't the look that you want to go for. If that is then 
fair enough you do you some people like to keep them longer because they actually stick them out so it creates like an almond shape but I wouldn't really suggest doing that unless you're doing like a black wing liner or something like that to conceal the space between your actual eye and the lash but today I'm just showing you the basics so this is the lash that I'm going to be using today. This is Olivia by Doll Beauty. And I can't remember if I've actually measured these or not. I think I have used these set. I don't know. So the way that I like to measure my lashes is I find where I want them to stop, which is typically where my longer lashes stop. If I look forward, it's typically just at the end of my iris. Is that what it's called? I don't know. The coloured part of my eye, the inner part of that is where I'd like my lashes to kind of stop or taper in. So I look straight into the mirror, I've got a mirror by here, I look straight into the mirror and I just kind of plop them on, just like that. So you look a little crazy at first, but it's fine, we, we haven't stuck them down yet. Don't worry about looking stupid, you just pay us up, you know. Who, who cares, it's not like you're broadcasting this to the internet for everyone to see. <sighs> anyway, as you can see, the lash is kind of drooping down a little bit here. And I haven't brought the lash all the way in. I've kind of left about a third with no false lash at all. If you take it in too far, it's going to stab you and be really uncomfortable on the eye. So I always like to leave a little bit of a gap. And if that bothers you, then you can just put a little bit of black eyeliner there. If you have an invisible band eyelash, then it shouldn't be as bad of a problem for you but if you have kind of like a black band like these ones do it may show a little bit so I have a little bit of overhang on the end of the lash so I'm gonna trim that off a little bit I would suggest being a civilized person and using scissors to cut your eyelashes <laughs> but I use whatever is available to me so I'm not gonna judge you if you do the same but I actually use a nail clipper they're just easy to use and available right now. What I do to actually take off the ends is I go little by little because you can always take more off but you can't add more back on. So I take it segment by segment. So I'm just going to take this very end segment off here. There we go. And then I measure it up again. So put it in the same spot. And can you see how that looks so much better? And it's not bowing down anymore on the outer part of my eye. It's sitting more flush with my actual eyelid. My eye, when I close it, it kind of bows out a little bit in the corner here. So I never have a smooth surface for my actual lashes to go onto. And that's completely normal. Some people have sagging skin. Some people have bumps on their eyelids. There's always going to be something that may get in the way. And if you have perfect eyelids, then I'm very jealous. <laughs> so what I also like to do is I close my eye and you can really see see the ridge of your eyelid by your lashes and I just like to kind of trial run and push it up against. I always have to bear in mind this so I have to kind of wiggle my lash to make sure it's very malleable and make sure that it's going to move with my eye because it's not the same structure as what the lash band is. And remember the lash band is actually movable. Obviously don't be too rough because it is kind of a delicate small thing. If your eye is completely rounded then you can put it like that. If you have a bit more of a curve on the inner corner, you can put it like that. Just adapt it to your eye, and that's what I like to do. So I'm just gonna wiggle mine a little bit before I put it on. It's up to you whether you wanna put mascara before or after the lashes. Personally, I like to do it before. I find it awkward, and I find I kick up the lash if I put mascara on afterwards. It just always happens to me, so I always put it on before. But if you don't have mascara on, you can really see your lash line, so it's really up to yourself which way you like to do it. I'd say practice both ways, and then you can find out which one works more for you. I'm just gonna put a little bit of lash glue on. Now you don't need to overload the lashes with a lot of glue. In fact, if you do that, you may find it a little bit harder just because it'll take longer to dry down and also it may be a little bit of a slippery mess. I have like a rule of three. So I put a little bit on the inner corner first, the outer corner, and then the middle. And then what I do is I just do a light sweep to join them all together. But I want the most product to be in those particular areas because that's going to secure it to my lid where I want it to stay down the most. Now, whoa your horses, okay? Don't go slapping it on straight away. Wait a few seconds, okay? A about 30 seconds, you can just chill, blow on the lash a little bit. Just kind of wave it around like you just don't care. I don't know, just leave it for a second before you put it on. To apply the lash, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my arm up so 
like I'm reaching for the sky. Okay, maybe they're not that far, but I put my elbow up in the air and I bring the lash from above down. I have my little mirror here and it's just below me, just at an angle so I can see underneath my lashes. And I make sure that the curvature of the lash is down also and not flat to my eye. And then I come in and I press the middle down first. Okay, so we have the initial application and now we need to stick down the inner and outer corner. I always do inner first because this is the most awkward one for me. And I push it up against the skin. And then I come to the outer corner and I stick that down as well. And that's what the lash looks like. I'm not finished yet. <laughs> I'm just leaving it settle for a moment. And then what I like to do is I just take my fingers and I just kind of make sure that it's all pressed up against the lid. It helps to look away from where your fingers are because otherwise you might feel like you're poking yourself in the eye and then flinch. So if you look away from where your fingers are, it helps. Now before finalizing the lashes and like securing them in place, I like to use my phone and I take the camera and I take a little selfie from above to see the lash band. Just look down and then you can really see what's going on from above. You can see whether it's flush to the lash line or whether there's a gap. Mine is looking pretty good right now. So I'm gonna take my tool of choice, which is always these ones. These are really cheap online, okay? And they're kind of more safer on the eyeballs than say tweezers. What I do is I slide these over the lash, Come in from above inwards and I squeeze my natural lashes with the fake ones to really secure them in place. This also makes them feel a lot nicer on the eye and you can't see them as much because you've kind of squished them and made them flush with your actual eye. Again, disclaimer, when doing this, be careful because you are putting an instrument close to your eye, okay? <laughs> if you're not using an instrument, then just be careful with your fingers, okay? <laughs> Okay, so that is one lash on and all complete. Now if you have a very thick lash band, what you can do is you could go over with a little bit of black liner to cover that up. I personally am not gonna bother. <laughs> now I'm just gonna say this is not perfect. I'm not amazing at lashes. I just practice, practice, practice and take my time and I don't rush it. So that's what I would suggest to you. <laughs> that is it for this video guys I hope you enjoyed and I hope you maybe learned something a little bit today maybe this helped you out with applying your lashes if not well I tried <laughs> if you did enjoy this video and you like the idea of me doing a back to basics series then don't forget to hit the little thumbs up button so I know I always forget that there's people out there who don't know the ins and outs of makeup so I think it'll be nice to have like a playlist where it's just all the basic I'm in no shape or form a professional these are just things that I've picked up and learned through YouTube practice through just playing with makeup so thank you Katie for starting this off hopefully we can make it a series maybe I'll do one like once a month or something like that if you're new and you like these kind of videos don't forget to hit the little subscribe button and click the little bell button next to it so you get notified of when I upload or if you're just a regular visitor of my videos and you haven't yet subscribed I would so much appreciate it if you did I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the year fingers crossed I've gained a few recently so thank you so much for joining me I like making new friends <laughs> anyway it is really late at night I need to go to bed I'm delirious uh so I'm gonna love and leave you but I hope to see you in the next one till then bye guys personally I didn't think about and it was and it was and actually and and another oh if you I got a hair in my mouth I'm trying to hit 500 so I, oh my god I can't talk I'm trying to fit um uh.